Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. The Christmas Eve service will be online on Christmas Eve, and it will be available at 6 p.m., and it will be replayable after that. If you would, and if you can, get a picture of yourself and your family in front of the tree with a candle and send it to me. I would really appreciate that. Are there any other announcements? Let us turn our hearts and our minds to worship. Let us sing together. pray together. Holy God, we welcome you to our house, the sacred space we have built to gather together as your people. Here we come to offer you our thanksgiving and praise in response to the abundance of your creation. Here we come to share with you our prayers of confession and petition, for they lie heavy on our hearts. Even knowing that you are here and everywhere, we come longing to hear you say, I am with you always. Amen. Scripture reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, and it's the ever-familiar Christmas story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. In the darkest days of our year, we celebrate a God who humbled himself for us. We honor the obedience and acceptance of Mary and Joseph. We rejoice with the shepherds and we exalt with the angels. The miracles, the parables, the sacrifice, they are all ahead of us. What we have now is hope. The very first and the very best Christmas gift. And that's a lot. What's so great about hope, though? You can't touch it. You can't see it, you can't buy it, you can't sell it, but try living without it. Chesterton wrote, hope is as unreasonable as it is indispensable. Without hope, we would be crushed by disappointment, by disease, by all the twists and turns of real life. In a troubled marriage, in addiction, in sin and suffering, hope is our refuge. It is the wellspring of our courage. Hope lifts us up. It banishes fear. It opens us to possibilities. That was an excerpt from the sermon I preached on this Sunday a year ago. At that point, I didn't realize how prophetic it would be to speak about hope and our need for it. Right now, we would pay a premium for it. We can't buy hope. We can't sell hope. We can't touch it. We can't see it. But we can provide it. We can embrace it. We can share it. We can cling to it. We can build our very lives upon it. Because hope has such a solid foundation. Hope is the confident expectation of God's love and God's blessings that flow from it. It's not an assurance that everything's going to be fine and that life will be good. It is the assurance that God will be with us every step by step as we go through it. Where do we find hope? We don't. It finds us. It is one of God's gifts of grace. But unlike so many other Christmas gifts that are going to be torn apart and open this morning, no batteries are required for hope. Well, not Duracells, anyway. <laughs> hope is powered by the Holy Spirit. Hope is powered by our faith in God. We've heard the story, and we read it again this morning, about how the stars in the sky shone brightly on that first Christmas. In the Gospel of Matthew, there's a story about a special star that shone brightly that magi from the east could travel and find Jesus. We have that sign again this year. Tomorrow night about sunset, if you go outside and look at the southwest horizon, it will be present to us once again. And how 
cool is that that we get to see this big star in the sky you know it's almost like god is telling us this has been a horrible time but don't give up hope there's more life finds a way life always wins god wins god has a last word and that last word for us today is hope and love but here's the thing the sign to those folks 2,000 years ago wasn't the star in the sky. The sign was a baby in a manger. An unwanted pregnancy has saved the entire world. The sign was this child, this baby. How common, how ordinary. That happens every day all around us. But the message might be that that's where God is found, where we least expect it. We might be waiting for the planets to align and the stars to shine brightly. We might be looking for a bush to erupt in flames and talk to us. We might be looking for big neon signs or a plane carrying a banner telling us what we need from God, but the signs that God is with us lie in the very ordinary places in our lives. What are those ordinary things in our lives? Well, when we go outside, we can see them. We can see that it's coming upon winter now. Tomorrow, it will be winter. And it's going to be cold. The life around us and the trees and the bushes and the ground itself is withering and freezing. But they're not going to stay that way, are they? No. Tonight, when we go to bed, it's going to be dark. The sun is going down. But the night can't be so dark that it prevents the sun from rising in the morning. Life always finds a way. Have you seen the movie Jurassic Park? Jeff Goldblum's character in Jurassic Park, he's the mathematician, he's the guy that tries to tell them, no, this is not going to work. You can't confine life. You can't put boundaries on it. It's going to find a way to expand and escape and to grow and to multiply because life always finds a way. Love always finds a way. And it's found in the ordinariness in our lives. So, while it'll be so cool and heartening and fun to step outside after sunset tomorrow and watch for that planetary alignment in the sky and that star of Bethlehem shining again for us, the real sign that God is with us is in that ancient story, as it always has been, that God is always with us in the little things we can find God. There was a story last week about a Dairy Queen in Minnesota. Did you all hear this story? That one car paid it forward for the people behind them, and 900 cars did the same thing. Some couldn't afford to buy the entire meal of the people behind them, but they put $20 toward it. But 900 people, for a moment, passed on a blessing to someone else. That's more than just a news story. That's an example that as long as humanity has people that will appeal to their highest self and show love to other folks, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. In our community, there are people who are hanging candy canes on bushes for kids. There are people who worked so hard to bring a Christmas experience to the kids in this community. The park is beautiful. And in a year when we don't have our usual traditions and when we don't have 
all of those things that spoke Christmas to us, we are reminded that those things never were Christmas. It was God, Emmanuel, God with us. As long as there are people who do for others, that's a sign to us that there is more love. We have a family in town who opened up a Santa's village for folks. We have people in town who help out quietly, stories we never hear about. These are the ordinary things that are assigned to us that God is with us, that life finds a way and love always wins. Many of us are in grief this year. Many of us are mourning the loss of loved ones, the loss of traditions, the loss of those who are living and can't be with us, and the absence of all of those traditions and things that we hold so dear. And we should mourn those. But that's not the end of the story. In the darkest day of the year, a light shines in the darkness. And the darkness is no match for that light. So folks, this year, yeah, Christmas is going to be different. But it's still the story of God putting skin on and flesh and coming to live among us walking with us each and every day. Did you know how many coats were dropped off for others? How many gifts are bought for other folks and shared among the community and beyond the community? Let this be a sign for you that God is with us. Amen. From a child, we know that God is with us. So, though our hearts be heavy, let our spirits be light. And you know, I often think about this idea that we are to be light for other folks in the world. Because the world is so dark right now, and the world needs light. And we are called to be that light. And sometimes I feel like we are sitting on a warehouse packed full of light bulbs. But folks, we have the light we need. Let's take that light and let's share it with other folks. Let's remind people that they are loved beyond what they will ever know. There are angels among us. Be not afraid. God is with us. Amen. We have many joys and concerns in our community and in our world. Would anyone like to share how you've been blessed this week? It was a joy that Doug reported we collected 1,800 coats this week, and they've been handed out for free. 1,800 kids have coats that didn't a month ago. To say what a blessing it is for Gary Coulter. <laughs> he took our damaged church sign that was out on Old 36 and made it look good again. <laughs> it's back up along the road. So thank you, Gary. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Let that baby speak. That's a sign that God is with us. <laughs> Are there other joys to share? Donna? Yeah, and what a blessing it is that you are here yeah. with us. <laughs> yeah, I feel very blessed. 
Are there other joys? We also have concerns. And as a nation, we have lost over 300,000 now to this COVID virus. That's more than we lost in World War II. So let's keep all people in our prayers. Are there other concerns to be shared? Let us go to our God in prayer. Merciful God, it is beyond our knowledge and understanding to put into words the wonders of your coming to be among us and all that it reveals to us and continues to reveal to us. We praise you for the light that came into the world at the birth of your son, a light that is still shining and showing your glory to us. Accept our worship that comes from hearts filled with awe and wonder. Lord Jesus Christ, as we prepare to celebrate your birth, we confess that we are often too busy with our festivities to take time to think about what your coming means. And in this season, when we are grieving the loss of those festivities and our gathering, we turn to you, O oh God. And we know that you are the foundation that we build our lives upon. O oh God, we know that you get the last word that you are walking with us each and every day and god as john came proclaiming your message of justice and repentance may we also be a voice in our own time and we ask that by our words and prayers and actions we may be messengers and witnesses for your kingdom of love and justice and peace as John came to prepare the way for your coming, may we, your church, seek to prepare the way for you to come in the lives of others. Help us, O oh God, to be light in this darkness. O oh God, there are so many in this world who need you, who need your healing presence, who need us and who need our presence. And God, we pray for those all around this world who live each day with violence and disaster. And God, we pray for those among our family and friends who need healing in their bodies, minds, and spirits. Hear us now as we pray. Gracious God, we know that in you, through your Son, Jesus, all things are possible. Help us to cling to that hope today and to share it with others as we go forth from this place. We find peace and hope and joy and love in your Son, our Savior. Amen. The offertory sentence this morning comes from Luke. Give, and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. And let us come with our gifts to this table as we share in the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the benediction. As we go forth this week, may the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of God and his son Jesus Christ be with us always. And may we share that with all we see. Amen. Thank you.